Hello and welcome to part two of my Kerbal Space Program series. In part one, I showed you how to get from just the start to unlock the basic rocketry pack, then get general rocketry, stability, and survivability. So unlocking all of tier three. And then in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get to the moon, land, and come back with just the gear from tier three to come back with a whole lot of science. So let's get right to it. First off, we'll start with the lander. You're going to need the starting point, the command pod MK1, with the parachute from utilities on top. And then from science, you're going to use the mystery goo containment unit, which you're going to attach to the command pod. Now that is very, very critical because when you come back to Kerbin, the only thing that's going to return is that. That way you keep your data. Second, you're going to need to get your fuel tank. I think it's the F the FLT-400 fuel tank in the middle with the, the four Separatron boosters placed like that and four legs. Uh, you could get away with three legs for less weight and drag but when landing on the moon you really just want to have as much stability as possible because it's really frustrating to crash or screw up or lose a leg. This way you're better off. And finally you get the small LV-909 fuel engine with a stack separator beneath that. And of course, don't forget the stack separator for your command pod. Next is the main rocket for the spacecraft. You're gonna have four of the FL T-400 tanks with not the LV T-45, do not use this one. Use the more powerful LV T-30 fuel engine. And then attach to that stack decouplers, or not stack decouplers, radial decouplers, which are under structural, the TT-38K radial decoupler. You'll use that to attach three, or excuse me, another four fuel tanks with the aerodynamic nose cone and the same engine you put on the main body. And you're gonna do that, press X, and get four of them. And attach them to where, now this is very important, get them to where the engines are lower than the main engine on your spacecraft, like that. And then onto those, another radial decoupler followed by the booster, followed by the aerodynamic nose cone at about the same level or a little bit below your center radial decoupler. Next up is staging. You're going to want your four smaller boosters along with your four outer engines, not your middle one, the four outer ones, in the starting block in stage eight, followed by decouplers for the boosters, followed by the center main engine followed by the four radial decouplers for the main outer fuel tanks, followed by the stack decoupler here, followed by the engine, followed by the Sevatron boosters, stack decoupler, parachute, and command pod. Save it and you're set. The reason we staggered the engines in the space plane hangar was to act as four legs for your spacecraft on the launch pad so it doesn't go spiraling out of control the second you launch it. This way it's at a stable launching platform. Of course you're going to want, you're going to, want to turn on your SAS, throttle all the way up, and normally for the most efficient launch you're going to want to launch your spacecraft when the moon's coming just over the horizon. However, this craft is pretty flexible, so you can launch at any time of day or night and still have enough fuel to orbit the orbit Kerbin, transfer to the moon, land on the moon, come off the moon, transfer back to Kerbin, and land. So here we go. Just press space to launch. So we're finishing out our orbital burn here, and it is going to be an ugly one. Yikes. So I want to get it above 90. There we go. We're going to even orbit, but it'll do. Set our target to the moon. 
And it appears we're a little behind it. Yes, we're a little behind it, so we need to scooch forward just a tiny bit in this direction. There we go. Oh, it's going to be an ugly transfer, too. Mm. Well, sorry you get to see all this failure, guys. 20,000. Five. Seven. Seven. Twelve. Okay, perfect. Well, I guess this just goes to show that you got a lot of extra fuel. This is not meant to be an efficient craft by any means. This is a utilitarian, you know, use it to get the job done craft. And you've got a lot of wiggle room, too, because I've got a wonky curve in orbit. I didn't leave Kerbin at the time you want to do, where the moon's coming over the horizon. You, I, I left at the wrong time. And not only that, I've got a terrible transfer burn I'm about to do. And then in addition to that, I'm probably going to have a wonky moon orbit. So there's a lot of extra fuel burning going on right now that does not need to be happening. So this is not a good video to watch if you want to be efficient. This is just a, I need to go there with my tier 3 and get it done. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here. Okay, so we're about to start our transfer burn. Just realigning our blue, making sure we're on target. Double tapping T a couple times. Three, two, one, and we're off. Okay, so we arrived at the moon. Now I'm going to set... Oh yeah, that's wonky. That's <laughs> really wonky. I'm going to get to our periapsis here and bring her back around. Alright, when they flip, you're good. We're at 17 and 14. Perfect. Now, whenever we circularize this orbit, you notice there's this line sticking through the center of the moon on its orbital path. We're going to try maybe around here or for the other side around here. That's where we're going to completely retrograde burn. And we're going to just come all the way back, all the way down to about 100 meters a second or less. And then we're going to drop like a rock right on that point. That way, whenever we take off, we can circularize our orbit around the moon on the same axis as Kerbin, and it'll be a lot easier to transfer. So we don't have to deal with all this garbage trying to transfer back. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. Starting up our rocket. Bringing it around town. And slowing it down. Just to where these flip and whoop! Okay. Still good. Still good. Now, if you did not, if you missed my uh, most recent KSP video where I land on the moon in complete darkness, it's highly recommended that you do not do that. That was completely on accident and was not worth the year loss on my life because that was intense. So we're going to come back around during the daylight here and land just about here so we're, we're level with this, this other orbital path. Right about now, up a little bit further. That should be about good enough. Now we're going to layer all the moon load up. They're going to swing this around and do a retrograde burn. Using that speed up trick to stop us. There we go. Slide a little to the left. Perfect. Press T and then we're going to retrograde burn until we're about to, we're around 100 meters a second. And that should rid of all of our fuel. So even with all that crap, we still got some extra fuel to burn. So that's good. 
ditching that. And then we're going to slow down just a little bit more. Perfect. And then we're going to orientate the back side of our craft to the top of the blue half of this ball. If you haven't noticed, I'm terrible with technical terms or space in general, space knowledge. Uh, KSP is actually the reason I even know anything there is to know about space because it got me into it. Without this game, I would be just as clueless as the vast majority of Americans out there when it comes to space. So I'm very, very glad I picked this up. And if you're watching this and don't own KSP, I highly recommend you get it. Such a great game. Great game. And go check out my special moment in KSP. That's just another example of why to buy this game. Very fun. Now we're still 10,000 meters up, so I'm just going to kind of let us fall here. Uh, not really, not getting too far above 100 meters a second. Okay, we're getting to around 5,000 meters a second. That's when you want to kind of speed up your, uh, or slow down your descent. And then at around 2,000 or 3,000, depending on how high up you are, and I feel like this is kind of mountainous, so I'm going to continue to slow down. You want to adjust your speed to where you're about around mm, between 7 and 10, and then just before you hit the surface, you want to be at around 3 to 5. Really starting to slow it down now to about four. I'm trying to keep it as level as possible, but don't want to slow down below one, or otherwise you're gonna start taking off. Woo! Actually, not very uh, flat at all. But okay, we've made it. Awesome. So before we run out of energy here, we're going to want to observe the mystery goo. EVA come down take a surface sample excellent and now we're in the Midlands so I get a lot or have I been to the Midlands I'm not sure but for different regions of the moon you'll get different amounts of data get an EVA report of course, all of the value right now is much less than it was before because I've already been here. Back in. Excellent. So now we're done here. Time to head back to Earth or Kerbin. First, you're going to make sure that you have SAS on. And then press space and you'll activate your Septron boosters and it'll give you a nice straight shot. Off the surface. You have your landing gear while you're at it. And then swing yourself to the 90 degree heading and then get almost even with that orange. Perfect. And then full throttle on the booster. We're going to get ourselves to about a 10,000, 20,000 meter uh, orbital height, excuse me. You don't need to be very high at all from the moon to get a nice transfer since there's hardly any gravity. I'm going to wait till about 15. Click on my Apple Apsis, circularize it, just for the switch, and then align myself with the blue. SAS, and we're set. Well, I was not paying attention at all, and I way passed up our node, so this is going to be a wonky orbit. This is why you don't eat and fly a spacecraft. 
Okay. Even so, we're so good. Now it's time to transfer. You're going to want to transfer in the opposite direction of Kerbin. And bring it into the... Oh, a little too much. I guess it didn't really matter where you land anymore. Before, they had the recovery option. It mattered where you landed. Now you can just land anywhere on Kerbin and get recovered. So that's good. Transfer burn and homeward bound. Holy hell, what happened? Wow, man, I am not paying attention at all right now. That's terrible. So, this goes to show you can literally just mess up a hundred times and still make it back. Because this is the most sloppy tutorial guide ever. Swing it around. Oh, pillow earth. Wow, our Kerbin. Wow, we just hit like. We just hit 15 plus G's on that. <laughs> Jebediah would be dead. Ditch in the bottom, activate the parachute. And if you're gonna fast forward, be sure to stop at around a thousand meters because I've had craft ripped, ripped apart by the force of the warp speed with the parachute open. And then once you have it open, you can fast forward again. Ta-da! And with that, we've real arrived back on Earth safe and sound. Time to recover. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna get near as much data as I normally would. I only got 79.2, and that's because I've already done all this before. I think the one thing I haven't done is taken a Midlands report, maybe. But either way, that's a how-to on how to go to the moon, land, come back with a whole bunch of valuable data, which is tier 3. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Sorry for the really, really, really bad gameplay. Man, I was... Yikes. Don't eat and play Kerbal. Don't do it. And better yet, don't eat and record a Let's Play. It's even worse. Anyways, thanks for tolerating me, guys. I hope you all liked it. More KSPs on the way. Let me know what y'all think.